Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 9th of October 2011. I thought I'd take a little time out today to update you on what's going on with the solar cycle. I thought I should start doing this about every month or so as the sun moves towards solar maximum. But first our trivia question. We see supernova in distant galaxies all the time. However, when was the last time we saw a supernova in our galaxy that was visible to the naked eye? It actually happened on this date. The answer will be given at the end. First let us take a look at the sunspot number. I think you all by now know that I don't like sunspot number as a measure of solar activity and the reasons why. However, it's the one that's most commonly used, so let's just grin and bear it. You can see that the sunspot number has risen to about 75 in the last uh, month. The smooth sunspot number, which is shown in blue here, lags behind the forecast, shown in red, and the forecast puts the solar maximum at a sunspot number of about 90, peaking in early 2013, which implies that the solar maximum is not going to be as high as 90, or that it's going to be much later. However, this plot also shows the bursty nature of the solar cycle. You can see four distinct bursts here during the rise. And that's a concept that a colleague and I am currently working on, that in fact the solar cycle is not a smooth variation in magnetic field, but a series of outbreaks of activity superimposed upon one another, independently both in the northern and southern hemispheres. We'll see if that pans out. So let's return to more immediate issues and see what the Sun has been up to in the last 24 hours. In that time, we've had no sea flares, and the X-ray background has dropped to the B3 level. Currently, we have just five officially numbered regions on the disk. We lost 1306 over the northwest limb yesterday. However, we have two new regions appeared. One in the northwest that just emerged last night, and one in the northeast that rotated over the limb. And that one has a huge spot, as you'll see in a minute. So let's start by looking in detail at region 1309 in the northwest. This region seems to have decayed significantly overnight, having lost some of its satellite spots. Next we move on to region 1312 to its east. In contrast, this region seems to have gained a couple of trailer spots, and to me at least the leader looks a little larger. In the southwest, region 1310 is reduced to a single spot and is very close to the limb. So let's move on now to region 1311, which has continued the decay that we saw yesterday. In the southeast, we still have region 1313. Comparing yesterday's image with today, I can see there's been some decay, particularly in the trailer, and, and we've lost some of the satellite spots between the trailer and the leader region. So this region too is decaying. So we have a situation now with most of our numbered regions either decaying or only showing very weak growth, which explains why the X-ray background is dropping and why we're not getting many flares. But what about this region coming over the northeast limb? Well, there's a huge spot there. If this turns out to just be a single large spot without any trailer or uh, satellite spots, then there's going to be very little opportunity for it to produce any activity. Only time will tell. So now let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the uh, sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Really, once again, 1313 is the only region with any real structure, so that's the one to concentrate on. However, it might be worth looking in the magnetic movie in the northwest, see if you can see the emergence of that small region near the northwest limb. Once again, the AIA data is screwed up, so I'm not going to bother to try to show that. So we'll use the uh, stereo ahead and behind data to substitute. At the stereo ahead data, we're looking at our western side of the sun and the regions that have just rotated over the northwest limb. And you can see region 1306 towards the end of the movie, just about at this center from the Stereo A point of view. In the Stereo B data, we're looking at our eastern side of the Sun and the regions that are about to rotate over the northeast limb. About this center here, you can see the new big region that's just come over the northeast limb. However, it looks a lot less active than it did a couple of days ago, so I'm hoping it's not going to be a disappointment. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, we can see there's still an awful lot of uh, emission behind the northeast limb. So I'm hoping there's yet more to that region to come over the northeast limb as yet. From the SOHO LASCO coronagraph data, we can see that there's been a continuing parade of uh, small coronal mass ejections all around the sun, both in the small field of view and in the large. In the large field of view, the bright object exiting stage left is Mercury, and it'll be several weeks before it reappears in the C3 field of view, but coming in the opposite direction. 
The ACE data shows us that the solar wind has had remarkably constant temperatures, velocity and density of uh, so we're not yet being affected by that small coronal hole that I pointed out yesterday. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes took a nose dive earlier today. And I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And unsurprisingly with the lack of flares we have had no proton events. The NOAA 19 image of the auroral zone shows that it's a lot more active today than it was yesterday and has spread further away from the poles. This is consistent with the uh, KP index which has been varying between quiet and unsettled conditions in the last 24 hours. However, NOAA carried no space weather warnings in the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 61, the radio sun intensity has dropped to 118 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is relatively constant at 350 km per second with a density of about 1 proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are considered unsettled. My 24 hour forecast is that C flares are still possible, but M and X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number will remain low or go lower. Coronal mass ejections remain likely. The solar wind speed will go higher. And a geomagnetic storm is unlikely at the moment. From the composite coronal image, we can see that the bright region on the northeast limb is about halfway across the limb, so there's still some hope that there's more spots behind it. And over the next five days, there are three faint regions due over the southeast limb. The answer to the trivia question is 1604. On this date in 1604, a supernova was first observed. Kepler made very careful observations of this star, so it actually became known as Kepler's star. So it's been 407 years since we last saw a supernova in our own galaxy, but with the naked eye. However, the rather annoying thing is that just 32 years before, there was another one, uh, which was observed by Brahe. So that's known as Tycho's star. So I think we're about due. So that's it for today. Keep safe from those supernova. Bye for now.